Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to talk about pH indicators. So what are pH indicators and how do they work? Well, pH indicators are weak acids that exist as natural dyes and indicate the concentration of hydrogen ions or hydronium ions in a solution by changing colors. So you can basically think of uh, pH indicators as substances uh, that change color when exposed to certain levels of hydrogen ions or hydronium ions and there's several different types of pH indicators that we can use to check the pH levels of different solutions. We can then compare the color that that dye turns to a, a chart like you see right here for universal indicator pH uh, color chart, the red cabbage uh, color chart right here and several other different types of indicators and the colors that they change uh, helping us to determine what the pH level of that solution is. All right, so that is what a pH indicator is. So let's take a look at one pH indicator in particular. Let's take a look at litmus paper. If we take a look at litmus paper, litmus paper comes in blue and it comes in red. And if we take a look right here, we have two, two solutions. We have an acidic solution right here on the left and we have an alkaline solution here on the right. And what happens with litmus paper is this. If you take a red strip of litmus paper that has a dye that has been dried and soaked onto this piece of paper here, and we put it in this acidic solution, nothing will happen to this red litmus paper. All right, but if I take a piece of blue litmus paper and I put it into this acidic solution, then the tip of this litmus paper here will turn red. All right, this color change here tells us that this solution is an acid. Alright, so litmus paper is one easy way of determining whether or not a solution is acidic or basic by a simple color change. If we take a look at an alkaline solution, if I take blue litmus paper and I put that in an alkaline solution, nothing happens. The litmus paper will not change color. However, if I take a red piece of litmus paper and I put it in this solution, then the tip of this litmus paper right here is going to turn blue. This will turn blue. And that will tell us that this solution is alkaline or basic. Okay, So litmus paper is just one of many different types of indicators that allow us to determine if a solution is acidic or basic. And some of these indicators are even more precise. They will tell us the pH levels of, uh, of different types of solutions. So let's take a look at a few different types of indicator solutions. All right, this little chart here basically sums up all the different or several different types of uh, pH indicators. We have universal indicator. We have phenolphthalein, kind of hard to say. We have methyl orange. We have thymol blue. We have brome thymol blue. And we have got phenol red right here. Okay. And if you take a look at this chart, we can see the different colors that they turn in different pHs. All right? For example, if you take a look uh, at universal indicator, it will happen to turn red or a reddish color at lower pHs, the pHs of 0 to 2, and at pHs of 12 to 14, it looks like uh, that indicator is going to turn purple. Phenolphthalein, for example, if you take a look, is clear. Right? It's transparent. It's clear at a solution uh, or in, at pHs of 0 to about 7. And then what happens once that solution becomes basic or alkaline, it will turn that indicator uh, from a pink, light pink to a, a bright purple color at a pH of 14. All right, so if you take a look at this chart, if you pause this chart or pause this video, uh, this chart here will show you the more common types of indicators and the colors that they will change uh, when they're placed in solutions that have these different pHs right here. All right, so let's take a look at another type of pH indicator and one that you can, in fact, make at home in your kitchen. All right, and that is called a red cabbage pH indicator. And you can make this at home quite simply. Just chop up the head of uh, some red cabbage, put it in a pot, fill that pot up with water, and uh, heat that water up, not necessarily to a boil, but get it to a high temperature and, and, and leave the... Uh, the chopped up red cabbage in that pot for about 20 minutes and you will end up with this purple solution right here which is called red cabbage pH indicator 
and the red cabbage has a substance in it called anthocyanin which acts as a pH indicator for us and so what we can do and what we did in class is we took the pH indicator here and we applied this to several different substances or household substances for example in this bottle right here was lemon juice in this bottle right here was vinegar we have baking soda in this bottle and we have ammonia ammonia is actually clear this was some lemon scented ammonia and then we have some 1.5 molar sodium hydroxide what we did is we squirt some of that solution in this uh, in these clear plastic cups and then we added some of the pH indicator the red cabbage pH indicator into each one of these cups and what happened was uh, those solutions turned different colors as you see right here so we can then compare the colors of these solutions here or of these uh, substances here to this right here this red cabbage pH indicator chart so if we take a look if I were to ask what the uh, the pH of 1.5 molar sodium hydroxide was that's what we made right here you can compare that and you'll see that it's a, a, about a pH of 12 right a pH of 12 if we take a look at the ammonia right the ammonia here or NH3 we can see that it's at about a pH of 14 right if we take a look at the baking soda solution here we can see that it's somewhere in between 8 and 10 perhaps so right around 9 a pH of 9 will be this uh, baking soda solution. If we take a look at the vinegar solution right here and compare that to our little chart right here, we might say it's uh, somewhere between, uh, let's see, uh, four and two. So maybe a pH of three, somewhere in that range right there. And the lemon juice right here, uh, that appears to be about a pH of two in this range right here. All right, so you can simply make a red cabbage pH indicator at home. If you're going to do that, of course, make sure you're exercising a little bit of lab safety and wear those lab safety glasses and an apron. All right, so that is uh, uh, pH indicators in a nutshell, and I hope this was helpful.